taking the story forward, uh, the months leading up to his assassination, what what uh, what, what do you understand? Why he was assassinated? What, who were the players involved? Maybe could you have stopped it? Well, I'll tell you, after I saw Reagan's face on the television saying we have the absolute proof, the phone rang, and it was Barry. I hadn't heard from him in a couple of years. He said, I'm coming out tonight, Roger. And I, oh, boy. So uh, he came out. And he said, I'll meet you in this uh, French restaurant. I don't even know it in Santa Barbara. And I walked in. There's about 20 or 30 people in there. And they was all 30, 40 years old. Women with plastic or leather skirts and me in their blue jeans. And I looked around, and Barry was at the back. He was leaned up. He had gained weight. And I walked up, and I said, Barry, are you wired? He said, no. I said, well, I'm not going to talk. Are these DE agents? He said, every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, with jeans and skirts. I like it. <laughs> oh, so, I said, well, Barry, I'm going to sit you, and you just talk to me, buddy, and tell me what's on your mind. And he sat there, and he just went to talking, and he told me about that he was left holding the bag. and it, uh, What do you mean by that? Like uh, that nobody's supported him? Well, no, I nobody think that somehow or another— he was, uh, and and I don't know this. I mean, this is just what yeah. what happened, uh, putting it all together. That he had some CIA buddies that was pretending we going to supply all of our North with arms, and with that you can land cocaine back here by the ton. So he's taking his little planes and putting some AK forty sevens and maybe ammunition or whatever, and takes it down to the Contras uh, against the uh, communist party of Nicaragua, where we've been landing. And Oliver North was involved in this. So uh, when the, when all that, and so his CIA buddies was certainly involved, and we know they were. And it, Barry had been in the CIA earlier when he first got out of school. So uh, when, when um, as I say, the shit hit the fan, they all fled and left Barry holding the bag. The CIA and the DEA. Yeah. No, not the DEA, the CIA. The DEA wasn't in on it. The CIA was, was selling that cocaine, bringing it in. And uh, just to clarify, uh, what's Iran Contra scandal? What was the alleged involvement of the CIA in uh, in using drug trade to fund things? What do you know? What do you think is true? What should we know? Well, I know what I know is true that Barry was hot taking a small amount of arms back to Central America and giving them to whoever Oliver North group group were. Who's Oliver, Oliver North? North was a colonel that got implemented and almost brought the government down. And so they said, all right, we're getting the guns from Iran and we're taking cocaine to pay for them. Yeah. And since Congress won't give us money to fight this war, we're going to, we're going to circumvent it. So that was, that was a whole thing. So it was a CIA's effort to circumvent the funding mechanisms of government by selling drugs. Yes, but it was a handful of renegade CIA agents that was Barry's friends that was making a load, a load of money. Tons of it come up. If you would like to read the book, The, the Big White Lie, The CIA and the Crack Cocaine Epidemic, the CIA put, according to this, uh, uh, the book in, Michael Levine, I, I didn't remember his name last time I talked, uh, wrote that book, and he was a, a head CIA agent. Uh, he was a head DEA agent that exposed this, and the CIA tried to kill him. And he says they put crack cocaine. They developed their their chemists developed crack, and they put it in every country, every city in the United States on one weekend. So uh, they were bringing it up by the tons, and that's for sure. And Barry yeah. was bringing it. Okay, can I ask you a small tangent question? Do you think the public should trust the CIA and the DEA? Do you think they're mostly good people that are carrying out a good mission? Yes. Because this kind of makes it sound like there's renegade agents that are just doing whatever the hell they want and w with uh, sometimes no regard for human life. Well, that's certainly true, but that's not everybody in there. That's just sometimes you get a few policemen in, in the department that, that do these things. Yeah. I, I don't believe, I believe that our government is, is good. I think we've got some fools running it. Yeah. I don't know how we get them there, but uh, 
I don't well, think I know. Okay, so what, what was Barry's involvement here? And so Barry, did, uh, Barry leaned back in that chair and he told me that, you know, he uh, he got caught with one and a half tons and he bellied it in uh, the runway in Nicaragua and uh, had cameras flashing inside and out. And then he flew it back to Homestead with with an agent there and he brought the agent over, um, Jake Jacobson, really nice fellow. I think he was a crop duster. And we'd have got along if we'd have been on the right side. And uh, so we uh, we sat there and drank Chevis Regal until I got pie-eyed, and and uh, Barry told me about it. He said that he went to see Edwin Meese. He flew his, he got out on bail, and he flew his Lear jet up to Washington, and went in to see the Attorney General Edwin Meese, and they run him out of the office. The next day he went back and said, "I have absolute proof that the CIA is bringing tons of cocaine, or they're running sons of cocaine into the United States." And Edward Meese put him up with this agent, Jacobson, I believe it was. And they went down and got one and a half tons. And on the way back, they bellied it in. And Pablo Escobar and some of the other ones on general there in Nicaragua, you can see them toting it from one plane to the other. It's in the book called The Big, no, uh, Kings of Cocaine. Hmm. It's got a mention of me, too. And also the other one has a mention of me in it. Said I'm in more files for the DEA than Noriega. <laughs> so who was wanted to get rid of Barry? Is it is it the who wanted to get rid of Barry more? The cartels or the CIA? The cartel. But uh, so Barry leaned back and he and he he told me the story, and the tears came down between his fingers as he put his hands over his eyes and he said, "I I I just couldn't do it, Roger. I just couldn't do three life sentences." So I've told him everything. I went to Congress and I've testified before Congress. <clears throat> and he testified before Congress for all these things that he'd done. And he said, I told him all about you, but you're under my umbrella. You got to testify with me before a grand jury in Miami. And so the guy said, you can come down. The DE agent said, you can come down tomorrow with Mari, first class, or I'll take you down in chains. And if you don't testify with Barry, the only place you'll ever see your wife and family again is in a federal prison visiting room. Was that a difficult conversation? Oh, looking oh at him. my ice, my guts was just like ice water. I can't testify against my friends. I just can't do it. How am I going to do it? I just, I can't work with people. And he was honest with me. How am I going to testify against them? I can't spend the rest of my life in a federal prison. What on earth? What a mess, Barry, you got me into. So, uh, is that a kind of betrayal there? Yes, but it's still, I wish he left me out of it. <laughs> I understand him getting his, it, 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 in such a mess that he told, because if the CIA and whoever else would find him betrayed him, yeah. then he's going to tell everything. If you, So I says, all right, I'll be to Miami. So Mari and I flew down first class, <laughs> and, I, and I went to a lawyer, one of the biggest lawyers in Miami, and I said, man, I am in a mess. Mm -hmm. This fellow's told everything, and I've got to say something. But I'm not a snitch, man. I mean, I can you have what? What can I do? And he said, "Well, being a snitch is like being pregnant. You either are or you're not." <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he says, "I I don't represent snitches, but if you want to fight this case, I'll do it for six hundred thousand dollars." And I, boy, my face turned red. Well, I'm not a snitch. He said, "Well, that's what you're talking about." He said, "Let me tell you something. If you go in there and say one thing and sign that paper, and you don't tell them everything you know." Yeah. then they will convict you of everything you've ever done, and you tell them. So you can't do it. So uh, I said, Barry, I, I'm having trouble with a lawyer. Give it. I'll go tomorrow. Let's go. So all right, use my lawyer. And he gave me his card, the lawyer's card. So Mari and I went to the, the festival restaurant that night, and Barry and Debbie came in. She was dressed pretty, and Barry was, and so we was already about finished. So we had dessert together. And I said, Barry, they're going to kill you, friend. He said, no, they ain't going to kill me. So-and-so, such-and-such is gone and this and the other. I said, Barry, they're going to kill you, man. Ain't no, you can't deny it. And, uh, and I said, I didn't tell him I wasn't going to testify, so I, I hugged his neck. I really, like, and we fled to Brazil. I took Mari and the children went to Brazil. So you decided there you're not going to testify? I knew. I, just, no, I, wasn't gonna, I, I didn't know what I could do. I'd talk to a lawyer. I mean, I just didn't, I didn't know what, what I could do, but the best in Miami said what he told me. Yeah. So I had to go. And, and you so went to Brazil. We went to Brazil. Did you have a conversation with anybody at the cartel? Just, I mean, that's such an interesting moment 
that tests the man's character. Do not snitch. And did you have a conversation with anybody? No. Nope. Pablo with nope. about it. Like not at all. So it's just understood. I just didn't couldn't do it. But how many men like you are there? Not many. I had all my friends testified against me. I had eleven friends and every one of them put their finger up. Roger did it. And I was facing life, continuing criminal enterprise. And still life. you couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Did you ever get respect from the cartels for that? From the, from oh, the people they in the was cartel? The time I got back and stuff. They owe me money and I can't get it. <laughs> so <laughs> Well, it's, that's about money. I just mean about human beings. Oh, I think so. I mean, I've been integrity. back down there and I've been welcome. I, I have my uh, my contact. And uh, when I was in Brazil, I was trying to get this money. They owe me three and a half million dollars. Hmm. So I called up there and he was going to pay me. Oh, I got 600000 today and I'll get you some more tomorrow. And then the next week I called, hey, hey, got great news, great news. Barry Seal's been killed. So, oh, no. And I went back to the hotel. We was up in the uh, northern part of Brazil and... Where was it, Marty? Uh, he was in Guadalajara. Yeah. And uh, so I went back, and I told Mari and Miriam, and uh, and they cried, and I cried. I really cried. How How is that great news from the cartel oh, perspective? Well, now there's no case against me and him and them. Do you know who killed them? Yes. I'll tell you about that story. On the first load I did, I landed in a, at a banana plantation, and it was raining, and it was a muddy strip, clay. And they put the, the 300 kilos of cocaine in there, the ugliest man you can imagine, named Ronaldo, got in there with a MAC-10. And uh, he was making sure I took it to Louisiana. Mm -hmm. So This is many years before. Yeah, a couple of years before. So okay. anyway, he, uh, uh, we took off, and the mud got up in the wheel well so, so thick until the wheels wouldn't come up. Well, I'm going 200 miles an hour instead of 300 miles an hour with wheels coming down. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't go back there. If I do, I'm going to be in the same situation until the sun dries it out in a few days. And so, but in Belize, I had a, a runway that we'd been used for $10,000, used to refuel. So I told the guy, listen, we got to land in Belize to refuel. And no, 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 he put the MAC-10 and, and I, I'll shoot you. <laughs> Go ahead, fool. You're going to die too. So yeah. it was in the turf. So it, it, I, he wasn't just ugly. He was also He was angry. a bad, bad killer. Yeah. And so uh, he's the one to actually kill Barry, the one that w went up on the first load with me, and uh, <clears throat> Ronaldo, and he's in doing so life. He's, in, he's just a killer. Yeah, he's doing life in Louisiana. I wonder who uh, is is it known who made that decision? Uh, the younger uh, Ochoa brother, I understand, Fabio, was the one paid for the hit. I don't know that, but that's what I've heard, and it probably sounds about right. He's he's down in Jessup, Georgia, doing. A long, long time. I think he's about to get out. He's been in 30 years or whatever.